This could be the night that a Coloradan's presidential dream dies. Unless New Hampshire wants to shock the political world. He's a senator from Colorado, and I love Colorado, so I imagine he's a wonderful person. Next is on the ground as the polls close and the first votes are counted. Hold on with lifting Denver's pit bull ban. The mayor is not sure he wants it to happen. A plan to deal with the people who are living in our forests and sometimes setting them on fire. And as the Rockies organization burns to the ground, the man in charge bizarrely decides to throw some more gas on the fire. That's next. So this is it for Senator Michael Bennett. Polls are closing in New Hampshire right now, and along with them will be Bennett's presidential campaign if he can't reach his long shot goal of a top three finish. Lots of estab establishment Democrats say nice things about Bennett, but voters have put him in the friend zone in polling. As for enthusiasm, I don't know, you tell me. Me two ends, one T, Bennett is the one for me. I, I kind of like that. Two ends, one T, Bennett is the one for me. Kind of has like a throwback feel to it. Like, like, I like Ike, or all the way with LBJ. Of course, both of those men ended up president. Bennett may end up on a plane home with our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger, who joins us from a Bennett watch party in Concord. Hey, Marshall. It is a boisterous basement of the Barley House for the Bennett Bash. I'm here for all the alliteration and the results, which we should start seeing shortly. If Bennett were to continue beyond New Hampshire, it's going to rest in the hands of voters who first have to remember his name and then find it on a very lengthy ballot. Unlike us in Colorado, New Hampshire voters still get their ballots in elementary school gymnasiums. I actually, I like what <laughs> President Trump is one of 17 names the Republicans can choose from. There are 33 Democrats, including the one from Colorado, who's still working on people recognizing two N's and one T. Which, which, what, give me his name and I can tell you. Michael Bennett? I wasn't looking for him. There's a lot of people on that ballot. <laughs> yeah. No, don't know anything about that man. Oh, he's a senator from Colorado, and I love Colorado, so I imagine he's a wonderful person. <laughs> You're not going to get a 100% name ID. You uh, recognize Democratic Senator Michael, Michael Bennett, Bennett, but he needs New Hampshire voters to know him and find his name on a ballot. But his name is in a different spot, depending on where they're voting. I've seen sample ballots where it was Bennett Booker at the very top of the ballot, and I've seen them where we were at the very bottom of the ballot. So hopefully people will read to the end. You set a goal to finish top three in New Hampshire. Yeah. What happens if you do? If I do? You can tell he thought I was going to ask it the other way. That comes later. I am heading to South Carolina and I'm heading to Nevada. I think it'll be, um, it actually will be a real shot in the arm if I finish in the top three or four here. You've made a goal of finishing top three. What if you don't? We'll have to assess it, but it will be hard to get out of here if I don't finish in the top three or four. He is not the person to pick up. I'm a Republican and I voted for the president. I voted for Bernie. I picked Bernie. Biden. Winning an election is no slam dunk, but no one we chatted with at this one polling location voted for Bennett. Is this an expensive campaign to run for Secretary of Education for another Democrat who might be a nominee for president? Definitely not. I don't have any interest in that job. Um, if, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go back to Colorado and run for re-election and, and continue to make a contribution to this country. We also talked with Michael Bennett about his relationship with Senator Cory Gardner and his relationship with the president. We're working on getting that video in the raw for you to watch online. Kyle, be thankful we have a mail-in ballot. This is a sample of one of the ballots that you could vote on once you show up at the elementary school gym. And like I said, his name's toward the top on this one, but if you were in a different city or a different town, his name might have been in the bottom. But it was always between Andrew Yang and Joe Biden. Hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of folks, Marshall, have probably presumed that Bennett's level of support, like the bar you're in, has a very low ceiling. But I appreciate the fact that you did ask him the question of what happens if he wins because he put all of his attention into New Hampshire, bypassed Iowa for the most part, everything here. It kind of reminds me of when we put this show next on the air. We spent a year planning for the first show and gave no thought to what would happen on night number two and so on. 
let that be an example of what could happen if he wins. He'll just wing it from here. I just want to prove that I'm not necessarily this tall. We just have, you know, it's a, it, we got to stay up for, for purposes of being able to show the entire room. And as I throw it back to you one last time, Kyle, it's Marshall with two L's, Zellinger with one. Yeah, yeah, the one for me, I think, is how the cheer goes. All right, thank you. We ran my recommendation for today by Senator Bennett when we talked to him in New Hampshire because he knows the author of the piece. It's his daughter, Caroline. So set politics aside and, and read her essay for Refinery29, which is a digital site aimed at young women. What it's like to be the daughter of the ultimate long shot candidate is how she titled it. And this essay is smart, it is sincere, and it is sweet. Like when she puts a voter on the phone with her dad and he told the voter to judge him based on how he has raised his daughters. It's been the most rewarding part of all of this for me. Um, uh, when, I, when I was deciding whether to run or not to begin with, I, you've heard me tell the story about how I went home and Anne, the 15-year-old, said you should run. And, and I was am amazed that she wanted me to run. And, 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 but it actually turned out she wanted me to run, so she gave me out of the house during her 15th year. With my, but my oldest daughter, Caroline, said, Dad, if you run and tell the truth and you lose, um, no one can fault you for it. We have a link to Caroline Bennett's essay on the next Facebook page. I want to take a second here to thank everybody who wrote in with suggestions and encouragement for Richard Castaldo. He's the Columbine school shooting survivor who is still struggling with his injuries 20 years later. We told you here how nowadays Richard is homeless. He is recovering from new medical setbacks at a nursing home in California, and his friends reached out to us here for help. They do not want money. They're asking for help navigating the bureaucracy around medical care and housing. We are continuing to talk with various people involved in the situation. We appreciate and they appreciate the encouragement and the ideas that were shared via the email link to his friends in this story on 9news.com. The strange case against a mother accused of enlisting right-wing conspiracy theorists to kidnap her son from a foster family has been delayed once more. Parker police say that Cynthia Absug was plotting with fellow QAnon believers who think that President Trump's fighting a secret war against pedophiles in Hollywood and the Democratic Party. The case against Absug in Douglas County has been suppressed by a judge here. It means that no one in the public, journalists included, can get information about it. So we have been tracking Absug's extradition hearings in Montana, where she was arrested in December. She's a fugitive from a conspiracy to commit kidnapping warrant. Her hearing up there today was delayed for a second time. You saw her there on an internet radio show. She's become a bit of a celebrity in right-wing conspiracy circles with claims that her son is being abused by the Child Protective Services system. Absuck's currently out on bond, and she's not responded to our request to get in touch. Cheers, literal cheers, greeted Denver City Council's decision to lift Denver's pit bull ban. And less than 24 hours later, Denver's mayor is like, hold up. Mayor Michael Hancock says he wants to think about whether he is going to sign this bill. He could veto it, and it does not appear that City Council has the votes to override his veto. The news of a potential lifting of Denver's longtime pit bull ban is too late for people like Nicole Mullen, who adopted a pit mix named Cyrus four years ago, and rather than risk losing him, decided to just move out of Denver. Finding a new home for my dog was not an option. We were not going to part ways, so that wasn't even um, that wasn't even a thought. So having to find a new home was really hard um, because of the. Um, the way that these dogs are viewed and um, the stain that's on their reputation. Nicole and her husband, Cyrus the Pit, and their other three dogs eventually found a place, and, and she tells us they're comfortable there. They're not considering moving back to Denver, even if the ban is lifted. Now, it's a different story for Ambria Nelson down in Colorado Springs. She specifically moved there because she wanted to be able to adopt a pit bull, and she knew that she couldn't do that in Denver, where she grew up. She tells us that now that the ban could be lifted, she is already for looking for places back home, a spot for her and her pit named Meatball Fettuccine. That's where I grew up. That's where I want to be. I'd rather be there than anywhere else in the world. And if having a dog is going to prevent me from being there, uh, so be it. But now that it's ending, I might have to come back. 
Well, Avery might want to put those plans on hold for the moment. When we talked to Mayor Hancock's office, his spokesman said the mayor wants to be thoughtful regarding the decision on the pit bull ban. He has until Friday to either sign it, he could veto it, or he could let it become ordinance without a signature. An idea to help some of the people who are homeless in Colorado. An idea that's not just sweeping them into the next city. A sports league in Northern Colorado is changing the way games begin. We're not taking away from sportsmanship after the game. We've simply moved it to the forefront. And a lesson in how to make a bad situation worse, courtesy of the Colorado Rockies. That's next. It is too early for significant results out of the New Hampshire primary at this point. We are hearing that Senator Michael Bennett may speak to his supporters. We will bring that to you live if it happens while next is on. One big development, Andrew Yang has dropped out of the race tonight because, in his words, math. Two of the biggest wildfires in recent Colorado history are thought to have been sparked by people who are homeless and camping in the forest. That's enough of a concern that state legislators are working on a solution. Not forcing people out, but trying to reduce the fire risks. Our Steve Steger covered both of those fires. These are things that people are going to remember, Steve. They were significant events. Absolutely. One in Netherland and one in Costilla County. Kyle, Democratic Senate Majority Leader Steve Fenberg says several fires in his district have been sparked by homeless camper, campers. So a pastor in Netherland approached him with this whole idea. That pastor has already been doing some outreach to homeless campers, teaching them about fire safety and making sure they have the resources to keep their fires safe. Now, the Cold Springs fire burned near Netherland in 2016. Two men from Alabama started that fire. A man from Denmark living in the wilderness is accused of starting the 2018 spring fire, which burned more than 100,000 acres and destroyed 100 structures. This new bill would create a standard for folks reaching out to the homeless living in the wilderness, and it would provide grant funding to encourage groups around the state to do the outreach. Fen Burke says it's important because technically these folks have the perfect right to be there with some minor restrictions. It's an interesting question because it's they're allowed to live where they're living generally. 
we, we are, a, are a state that values public lands and those lands are public and they have a right to camp on those lands whether they are someone experiencing homelessness or not. Um, there's often a, a time limit uh, for how long they're allowed to be there. Um, so, so no, it, it, this isn't something where we need to go in and clear people off of the land. So this bill has bipartisan support and Fenberg says there hasn't been any pushback. It would provide about $100,000 in grant funding to incentivize these groups to do that work. But you got to think about the resource difference here. You think about Denver. There are tons of places where the homeless can go and learn about resources. But when they're out in the forest, kind of spread out all over the place, you have to go and find them and, and give them those resources. And that's part of the idea behind this bill. One of the number one things that I hear when I visit small mountain towns is people saying, you don't understand the homeless issue up here and how it impacts our community. One of the things we talk, we hear whenever we talk to the Forest Service yeah. is that these campsites are just used over and over again and people kind of move from campsite to campsite. So it's important to start talking about this stuff to try to get some sort of resolution. For sure. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Hi there. Our fast and furious February weather pattern continues. We got a little break today. Temperatures right at freezing, still well below average. And you know what that means. After a break comes the next storm and the next round of snow. Not nearly as impressive as yesterday's system, but we'll start to see the snow increasing in the northern mountains overnight tonight. Denver, you dry tonight. No issues with the drive tomorrow morning. It's a fast moving system. It looks to drop about a quick inch of snow, maybe two inches west and south of town between about three o'clock and about eight o'clock tomorrow night and then we're done and then we kick off the real warming trend that'll get you into next weekend. Partly cloudy, less wind tonight, a cold of 14 for a low tomorrow. Partly sunny, high 34 with afternoon snow showers. I have an inch of accumulation in Denver by this time tomorrow night. We have clearing and warmer weather moving in Thursday, close to 50 for Valentine's Day and for Sunday. Monday's a holiday for you. We're looking at another storm and another chance for accumulating snowfall. But if you're one of these guys or gals that like to get up into some of that white gold, you are going to love the weather forecast for early next week. The Rockies make an awkward situation awkwarder, which is a word I checked. A youth sports league makes a change that it knows won't be popular. I care more about children's safety than they do the criticism. They're trying to prevent another one of these. That's next.
what happens when it might be better to say nothing at all in tonight's edition of Presented Without Comment? Rockies general manager Jeff Breidich was expected to break his silence today over his feud with star third baseman Nolan Arenado. I'm not exactly sure what this is. The Nolan situation, so we thought we'd just start off with that off the top. So um, from your perspective, what would you just like to say about what's been out there publicly about yeah. the nothing at all? There's no comment. I haven't had any comment to this point, so okay. we're going to move past that. Thanks. Okay. Next question. He just says next question like you can just change the topic by saying next question. You can't do that. You're not you're not me. A uh, youth sports league in Windsor got rid of post game handshakes, which doesn't seem all that sportsman like. Actually, the head of the power to play league says this is all about sportsmanship and safety. Michael Peterson is proud of that decision. I think youth sports is extremely competitive, regardless of what sport you're playing. And the current status is you're seeing a lot of aggression. My name is Michael Peterson. I'm the founder and owner of Power to Play Sports here in Northern Colorado. We have seen a pattern of poor sportsmanship or issues concerning post-game handshakes. A few minor incidents. It's not something that happens at Power to Play much, but enough to the point that we felt we needed to look at doing something different. We've decided that instead of doing the traditional post-game handshake, we felt that we were going to do a, a handshake line at the beginning to exhibit sportsmanship versus at the end. We know that if we don't do anything, it's wrong. Do we know for certain that making this decision is going to be the end all to the issues that we're discussing or it's the right thing to do? We don't. We're going to take a chance and explore what this means over the next two, 3,000 games that we host in our facility, and then look at it down the road and say, how does this affect? What happened? I care more about children's safety than I do the criticism. Instead of a competitive environment where people are focused in on budgets and winning and losing, let's stop and take a step back and look at what's best for kids and families. That's my goal. Kind of nice to see somebody take a stand and stick by it for once. You guys do that nightly in feedback. We'll have that when we return.
A Michael Bennett walks into a bar. This is not a joke. This is a presidential campaign, and he has just come in to speak with supporters here who have gathered in Concord, New Hampshire. Michael Bennett set the audacious goal of finishing top three in New Hampshire to continue his long shot presidential campaign. There is absolutely no indication that he is going to make the top three, but there is a chance that he outperforms what his polling has been up to this point, which has been pretty meager. He's greeting supporters, so we're not going to get to hear him speak. We'll have that for you on 9 News at 9 and 10. Rick tweets into us tonight about Colorado's Super Tuesday presidential primary, wondering if we are unaffiliated and we turn in a ballot, do we become officially registered with that party? Rick, you do not become a member of that party, but your choice becomes public record like any time that you vote in a primary. Kevin's watching from Old Chicago says due to Crossmas looks like Kyle Clark and Fred Armisen had a kid. Are you sure it's not just a dude who looks like me with glasses on, the black glasses?